report had come the parachutists had landed in some part of the park. Headmasters stood on the steps in front of Blenheim and off we marched. My parents had decided to send us to uh, Malvern College. As the uh, war came, Malvern was requisitioned. And so we didn't go to Malvern. <laughs> and we went to Blenheim Palace, uh, quite out of the blue. You had 500 boys and staff coming to uh, Blenheim. And I remember arriving there, and my brother and I were new boys, and in the courtyard there were the leftovers from uh, Lady Sarah's coming out, her 18th birthday, which was later hailed as the last great party in Europe. Uh, and there, you know, the, the debris was still around. <laughs> uh, interesting. And we, we lived in the palace, all feeding in the great hall, long tables, house tables, with it all laid up. Uh, no cubicles for dormitories, but uh, the state rooms were used as dormitories. The, the beds were there, uh, lined up, you know, almost like a, a hospital ward, I suppose. That would be the equivalent. <laughs> the way of life was, well, routine, school routine. Getting up and then going to the washrooms were converted from part of the stable block, going down into the washrooms, and we didn't get any hot water for half a term. It was all cold water, <laughs> which didn't do us any harm, I think. We had to be very careful about uh, what was done. Certain screens were put up so far on certain of the tapestries, and then half term, they came and erected huts, which uh, were meant to be uh, for house use and for lessons too. But we weren't put under any great restraint. Well, I say no ink, only pencils, for example. Ink is uh, something that might get onto some of the precious uh, <laughs> paintings or something of that sort. <laughs> oh no. One uh, sunny evening, when uh, a report had come that parachutists had landed in some part of the park, and it's a very vast area of the park at Blenheim, so the OTC was paraded uh, in front of the palace. We were armed with uh, 300 rifles, or 303s, we were, there's the British rifle, and uh, ammunition and our two regimental sergeant major instructors, Willie and Gasson, came down, checking that we'd got them all in order. Headmasters stood on the steps in front of Blenheim, and off we marched. We just moved out into the park and uh, kept our eyes open. Unfortunately, nothing happened, and so back to school and back to bed and all the rest of it. Uh, and uh, the stories, of course, were circulated like, parachute is coming down dressed as nuns and things of that sort. Uh, completely untrue, of course, but this is the kind of story that happens. Of course, Blenheim was Winston Churchill's birthplace, so I always thought <laughs> there might be a kind of target area because of that uh, association, but it didn't happen. <laughs> The, the, the cross-country running, etc., of course, regular runs. And, of course, the whole grounds were absolutely uh, in use. The, the, the big lawns at the, at the rear converted into a football field and in the summer to a cricket field, a very useful one. The lake at Blenheim froze and we were able to skate on it, which made a great difference to having to do your voluntary run. <laughs> Went very clear in my memory, absolutely, as if it were yesterday. 
Well, that was the war beginning. We were very fortunate, weren't we? My goodness me, because it was what turned out to be a, a, a magic uh, location. <laughs> At the end of the summer term, which was when we were going to leave, it was the Duchess who gave the prizes away, I remember, yes. You, our futures were all in balance, weren't they, at that stage? Uh, we were all expecting to serve. The way of life was, well, going to change very dramatically and very quickly, of course. If you go back on Remembrance Day uh, to, to Morven, you will see the crosses and the names of massive, massive casualties. <laughs>